described it this way. In some distant forest, lightning strikes a dead tree, resulting in a forest fire. In the fire, a fawn is trapped, horribly burned, and lies in terrible agony for several days before death relieves its suffering. Couldn't we at least imagine a world where God wouldn't allow that to happen? Why would God allow that to happen? Traditionally, theists have said that there are, uh, there are reasons why this evil happens, even if we don't see it. But these days, there are some theists that are willing to say, no, gratuitous evil exists. It really does. There are some Christians that say this. And here's what's interesting about this. As a, as a point of um, debate or a point of logic, you could actually grant that gratuitous evil exists. Maybe you think the evidential problem of evil is a problem for the theist. But when you consider that, if you consider that one argument against the existence of God, and you include all these other evidences that you have for the existence of God and for, the, uh, for Christian theism specifically. All of this evidence, if you were to put them on a scale, would far outweigh the evidential problem of evil. So even if you were to grant this argument, the evidential problem of evil, as a good argument, it, it wouldn't, all things considered, lead you to believe that God does not exist because you have all this other evidence weighing down the scale, right? So I want to say that at the outset because maybe, maybe you're going to disagree with me and the things I'm about to say against gratuitous evil, and that's okay in terms of the big picture. But even still, I think the Christian has a few, um, a few points worth considering that, that we should uh, attend to. The first of this uh, is called skeptical theism, okay? Now, skeptical theism is a term, it doesn't refer to one who is skeptical of theism, but skeptical theism is a term that refers to the idea that even if it appears there are forms of gratuitous evil, there's still an explanation. Maybe we just don't know what that explanation is. Maybe we're not in a place to understand why that evil comes about. So, there are good reasons. God has those reasons, but we don't. And Alvin Plantinga, the hero of the logical problem of evil, he says this about the evidential problem. Why suppose that if God does have a good reason for permitting evil, the theist would be the first to know? I want to know, God, what's that reason for that? Why did Bambi have to suffer? Why well, think that me, I, have to know that? and that I have those reasons. Interestingly enough, when we get to the next problem or a variety of the problem of evil, um, we'll see how a biblical author sort of poses that same very question about skeptical theism. But there's another tactic as well that's sort of a part of the skeptical theism camp, and it's a, it's a form of chaos theory. Anyone familiar with chaos theory? A butterfly flaps its wings in South Africa, and it sets off a course of events leading to a hurricane in the Gulf Coast, something like that. How many of you have seen the movie uh, <clears throat> uh, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button? 2008, Brad Pitt, Kate Blanchett. Oh, wow. It's a, it's a story about uh, um, a man who's born old, and he dies as a baby. Very fascinating plot. But uh, there in the movie, there's a sequence of events um, where the female protagonist uh, is hit by a car. And what the male protagonist narrates is the sequence of events that resulted in her being hit by the car. That if things were to be even slightly different, if the taxi driver hadn't missed his alarm, or if the shopkeeper wasn't delayed in wrapping a gift, or if the truck driver was driving just a little bit faster, he would have passed by. And the point is that all these different events, which are out of our control, still can result in 
unexplainable suffering that is a human being hit by a car. There are just a variety of factors at play. Imagine a bunch of molecules bouncing off against each other. Eventually, some of them will interfere with us if we were one of those molecules. And so sometimes the, the cards of life that we're dealt with can just be the result of millions of different life choices that have been made down through the centuries, and we just have to deal with the hand that we're dealt with. So that chaos theory falls sort of within this skeptical theism response that, hey, maybe there are these reasons, but we just don't see these reasons. We don't know why they're there. All right, next I want to talk about theodicy here. What is a theodicy? Well, a theodicy is an attempt to vindicate divine goodness and providence in light of the existence of evil. So there are different forms of theodicy. One of those is called the soul-making theodicy, and it's roughly this. The reason why God creates a world with evil and suffering is because he is not interested in you living a comfy lifestyle. He is interested in bringing about salvific knowledge, that is the knowledge of salvation, and in creating Christ-like persons. There's nothing in the Bible which guarantees us health, wealth, and great pleasures in life, or the life of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. In fact, that's the life of sex, drugs, and rock and roll, roughly speaking, is contrary to the Christian worldview. What God's interested in is making souls. And to make souls, we have to go through trials. We have to go through sufferings. James writes, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Paul writes in Romans, We also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. You see, even in the Bible here, we see how our souls are crafted and we become mature individuals. We, we become more Christ-like. So that's roughly the first um, form of theodicy, the soul-making. There's also the free will theodicy. So you'll recall the free will defense. Well, the, the, the free will theodicy runs roughly the same way, that God wanted to create a world in which humans have freedom to be in relationship with him, right? And so for that reason, um, God creates free will in humans. And free will brings about the result of moral evil and, as some philosophers have theorized, even natural evil. And maybe we'll get into that in some of the, the Q&A. Um, all right, we also have natural laws that run the world. Physics, gravity, Conway's a little bit familiar with those. Uh, these natural laws were created by God to run the universe. And when they run the universe in such a way, and humans place themselves unknowingly in nature's path, we are bound to suffer from what the natural world does so that the natural world can function. So why are there earthquakes? Well, you should learn about plate tectonics. And as it happens to be the case, humans habitate in zones where plates function in different ways. Sometimes they go like this, sometimes they go like this, and earthquakes happen. Lastly, mystery. Job 1 tells us that Satan wreaks havoc without reason. And Ecclesiastes 8 says, There is something else meaningless that occurs on earth. Righteous men who get what the wicked deserve, and wicked men who get what the righteous deserve. This too, I say, is meaningless, writes the author of Ecclesiastes. There are a variety of factors that play into the cosmos, and sometimes we just don't know what the reasons are for why there's evil and suffering. And that's okay. The biblical text, I would argue, suggests that's okay. We don't have all the answers.